Okay, um, remember the Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew and the New Testament was originally written in Greek. Uh, if you've never heard of them, the, um, the Hebrew ELS Bible codes are when you take the Old Testament Hebrew text and you count, you skip an equal number of letters, every fourth letter, every fifth letter, every tenth letter, or whatever, and it spells out words and phrases that seem to comment on or or illustrate the the verses they're found in or confirm other verses um there's a lot of dispute about whether or not the Hebrew Bible codes are real even among Bible believers uh, David Daniels wrote a book well, answers to your Bible version questions, which is a good book, but uh, he has a chapter in there. I think it's it's one page about where he he basically shrugs off the Bible codes and says he doesn't trust them. And I know why he says that, but I don't think he proves his point. I still don't know of any reason why I shouldn't should not believe the Bible codes are real. Um, obviously, it, the average Christian Christian doesn't need to know about them. Uh, I think they're probably mainly God probably put them there mainly for the Jews' benefit. Um, obviously, because they're in Hebrew. But uh, like for example, I saw a video where this uh, a Jewish rabbi admitted that there's a Bible code, remember this is in the Old Testament and the Jews the Jews don't accept the New Testament but there was a Jewish rabbi admitting that there is a Bible code in the Old Testament that's, that states blatantly that Jesus is the Messiah um, which which would give the Jews no excuse really so um, that's why I think the Bible codes are pro mainly for the uh, for the benefit of the Jews. But um, remember, if the ELS Bible codes are real, which I think they are, they prove the authorship of God because they're statistically it's statistically impossible for them to be there by chance, and no human or computer is smart enough to encode all of them and whoever put them there knows the future the future since a lot of the bible codes are about events that happened long after the bible was written down um, a secular journal called uh, statistical science uh, did a, a study on some codes in, in the book of Genesis and they basically said it's impossible for these codes to be there, but there they are. <laughs> um, now, uh, this may be of interest to English-speaking people because, well, for a couple of reasons. First of all, because the codes are only found in the Mesoretic Hebrew text. You remember the Mesorites that we had really good system for copying the manuscripts without making a mistake. The codes are only found in the Mesoretic Hebrew text and the King James Bible is the only English version whose Old Testament is translated entirely from the Mesoretic Hebrew text. Some modern versions claim to have translated from the Mesoretic Hebrew but if you look closely at their work, you see they, they have literally ignored the Hebrew text in hundreds of places and just translate it their own way anyway, for apparently for no other reason than they didn't like the way the King James rendered it, so that the, and they didn't want it to read like the King James. But so for all intents and purposes, the only trend English Bible from the Mesoretic Hebrew is the King James Version. Uh, get the books 
the history of the New Testament Church, especially Volume 1, by Dr. Peter Ruckman, and An Understandable History of the Bible by Dr. Sam Gipp. Because, uh, the more knowledge you have of the, the history of English, early English Bible translations, the more appreciation you'll have for the significance of the Bible codes I'm about to show you. Uh, Dr. Carl Ball on his show Creation in the 21st Century presented these codes. He, had a, he has a team of friends that do a lot of research on the Bible codes and they found these codes in Psalms 12, 11 and 12. In Psalms 11 passage where it says in the Lord put I my trust we have the codes Bible Rogers and Erasmus um, in Psalms 12 the passage where it says the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. We have the codes Coverdale, Bible, 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 Wycliffe, Burned, Spiritual, Memorize, Beautiful, Readable, Read, Bible, Hans Holbein, Bountiful, Revival, Fruitful, Pastor, Revival, Pastor, Bible, and They Burned, Easy, Martyr, William Tyndale, Great, Geneva, Wesley, Martyr, Bible, Easy, Bible, Martyr, Translation, Tyndale, Tyndale, and Authorized. So we have in the passage about God preserving his pure words a collage of the history of the pure line of text through the early English translations culminating in the authorized version the KJV people forget that the King James Version was originally called in 1611 when it first came out. It was originally called the Authorized Version. So we have more confirmation from God that that it was called the Authorized Version not just because King James authorized its translation but because God authorized it There's one church that kept the word of the Lord. It's the Philadelphia Church. That period is roughly 1500 to 1900. Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and not denied my name. The church that kept the Word of God was the Protestant Church of the Protestant Reformation. And that's where your King James Bible came from.